Hey there guys and welcome to another edition of Inside the Arcade. So today we're going to be going through our 10p pusher or it'll be exactly the same uh, with quarters in uh, the states if you're watching from over in the states so the, the 10p's are pretty much exactly the same as a quarter. Now I'm going to go through all the ins and outs of a coin pusher um, and how they work, how you can maximize the profitability of the game and make sure that you get the best value return possible with your machine that you play. So what you'll notice with the coin pusher is that there is a lip at the front which actually changes the amount that the coin pusher pays out. Now to put this into perspective you need to watch the lip at the front. So at the moment it's set to the lowest possible height that the uh, coin pusher can be set at and you'll see that that there is sitting at about 10 degrees elevation. Now in order for the operator to make a greater profit which is something that you want to watch out for you want to make sure that the uh, the lip on the machine isn't set too high because now that elevation on the coin is much greater now in order for you to actually push a coin off from the coin pusher it needs to get over the last lip that is on the front of the, all the coins that are stacked up. Now I've removed all the coins from the lip just to show you exactly how different the coin pusher can be in terms of payout percentages. Now this is actually on the lowest possible payout and you'll notice that if I was to push the coin and give it a little bit of force from behind, it does actually travel up the lip. Okay, so we can actually push this along with another coin. Okay, and then when you get a stack of coins at the front, if the coins can travel over this lip, this edge here, if the coins can travel up then you can actually push that second coin which will give you a greater payout. Now what most arcade operators will do is set the lip to at least 50%. Okay so now there is actually a stop there and it, although it is still possible to push the coin up it is a lot harder because obviously the force of gravity, the force of friction is actually greater now that the coins have to travel up a further lip. Okay, and now that one is stuck. Now what you've got to remember here is that there will be a lot of coins on top as well. So obviously where you can just push a single coin up like that by pushing from behind when you have lots of coins on top, it is still there is still a little bit of friction there to create um, a stop there for the coins. Now, with very greedy operators, they will actually set the payout percentage to its highest level. Now you can see that there is a much greater uh, wall there for the coins to travel. And in actual fact, you'll notice that no matter how much you try, the bottom coin is actually incapable of going up the lip. So how does that affect your chances of winning? So another reason that you may be losing on a coin pusher is exactly how the arcade operator has set their gutter trays. So on the left and the right hand side 
there are gutter trays. Inside these gutter trays are literal gutters. So inside the gutter trays, there is a hole where the tempees or quarters can be pushed. This slider here can be moved to allow the hole to be greater or smaller to allow a greater or higher or lower percentage. When the hole is obviously bigger, the more tempees can fall down there. So when you push the coins, literally half of the force goes towards the gutters. Now these are on both sides, and again, they can be set from anywhere to the biggest opening, which is obviously less payout for the player, or a smaller opening, which means that more force will be coming forward towards the player and the exit hole. Now something you'll need to watch out for when it comes to notes in coin pushers is that you need to make sure that the note is actually winnable. Now in the UK you'll find a lot of notes that are drooped over the side like this and this gives the impression to people that the note is actually ready to pay out. It's almost over the edge and you're thinking, wow, that is an easy win. Now, what you won't ever realize is that all the coins over the top here will always cover up what is hidden underneath. So there may be tape underneath holding the notes on. Uh, there may It may just be the force of the coins as well um, that will um, hold the note in place but you'll probably find that any notes that are left like this will be unwinnable and they're there for decoration and to entice the player okay so what I want to talk about next is rolled up bank notes now this can obviously be in the shape of a dollar bill five dollar bill or UK currency as you can see in the video now now, unfortunately, I haven't got a uh, suitable metal object in the sort of shape and weight that would normally be used in a rolled up banknote, but I'm, hopefully the pen should have enough weight to it to uh, give the desired effect. Now, you can guarantee that the payout percentage when a rolled up banknote is put on to the shelf, the percentage or the, sh the lip will be as high as possible. Again, this is because the arcade operator is there to make money and they literally do not want to be just giving their profits away. So I'm going to lay out some coins, speed things up a bit rather than actually playing, and hopefully you'll see what happens with this banknote. Now already you may be able to notice it's actually rotating with the forward momentum of the coins. So although it's hard enough to get the coins over the edge, you will find it's going to be 10 times harder to get this banknote over as well. You can see clearly that it is rotating. And this is because as the movement of the top layer is moving forward, the weight of the note is going backwards down the slope that is created with this lip here, and it is literally acting as a roller. So although the coins are moving forward, going down the side, they're not coming our way. So I've lowered the payout percentage slightly to allow us to actually move the note along the play field. And hopefully you'll see what the second scam is with the pusher. So you notice it's moving forward ever so slightly now, which is really good. And again, 
the lift on this tray here is enough to send the note backwards. It's moving forward and then we'll get to a point and it will roll backwards. There she goes. Now it's never to say that notes in coin pushers are impossible to win. They have just been, you can guarantee though, that they have been designed to maximize the profits to the arcade rather than maximize the opportunity for you to walk away with a decent sum of money. So in actual fact, rather than moving forward, you'll probably find that you'll send it further back. So we've had some wonderful pushes here right now. But we're getting no further to winning this banknote because it is literally going around in circles. So that's another scam that you definitely want to watch out for. So there's one last thing that I want to talk about in regards to uh, coin pushers. And this is the appearance of cards that appear to be making quite a big comeback in the coin pushers. Now, the, the ones that seem to be the most popular at the moment are Spongebob, you've got Marvel, and um, Batman, Superman, Star Trek, to name a few. Now, these encourage you to collect cards in exchange for tickets. Now, you'll all probably know that obviously in these card packages are rare cards. Now, with the SpongeBob, it's the Garys. With the Chase the Ghost, it's the blinky ones here. The Red Ghost, he's the rarest one. In order to uh, win them, you have to be lucky and get the card drops to shoot the cards onto the playfield. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is how to win the cards, what's the easiest way of winning the cards, which cards to go for, and also one of the um, common occurrences that seem to happen quite a lot is the floating card, where it appears that the card is ready to be paid out, when in actual fact, it still takes quite a little bit of time before it actually pays the card out. Now the good thing with the SpongeBob coin pushers is that it doesn't have the side gutters. So any coins that are pushed along the side literally come out from the side. Uh, you know, they don't disappear into the gutter. This means that all the coins that go through the coin pusher do eventually come out the bottom end towards the player. Obviously you don't get you don't get paid a coin, it's paid in tokens uh, or tickets and uh, Therefore, the only way that you can get any real sort of profit out of the coin pushers and the cards is by winning the cards themselves. Now, every so often I'll see a video where the floating card happens, and this is purely down to a weight ratio difference, where the card can literally be pushed along the, uh, the coin pusher, and the coins at the back of the coin, at the back of the card, literally create it to float. Now that is almost over the edge and it's not unheard of to see cards like this. It's not being held up at all there. And uh, yeah, so it's literally floating in midair. It's only when these coins are either removed or the weight is literally too great of the card actually coming down itself is uh, outweighs the, the weight of the coins itself. So what you really want to be doing is going for the cards that don't have any coins on top. 
Now obviously this is easier said than done because once a card does have coins on the top, it's very hard to change that. Obviously if you have a card that's here where it first drops down and you get coins drop on top of it like that, then uh, you are leading to trouble. But obviously it doesn't stop the cards from being paid out, it just makes it a tiny bit slower. When I see cards being played for on the internet, I do notice that sometimes people seem to go for the side cards. Now I don't quite understand how this is uh, quite possible uh, to be the best tactic as the sideward uh, ratio of coin forward movement is going to be much greater in the middle section. So if you can imagine now there are three cards on the play field. Okay and you want to win at least one of those coins. Guaranteed you that if you was playing a three slot, not necessarily this slot because um, this pusher is a little bit more random where the coins land, but if you was playing a Star Trek or a Wizard of Oz, then you would be better off sticking your cursor straight down the middle because the coins in the middle will move a lot faster down the middle than it will do down the sides. And this is again because the forward movement of each coin onto each coin will be greater this way than it will be this way as it will also be pushing coins to the left or to the right. So obviously don't not go for the coins, especially if it's a rare card that you want, but don't make a big habit of it, especially if you notice that a load of cards are all dotted up like that on the left or the right because you'll notice that they're there for a reason and they've been there for quite a while. So your best bet is to go for cards in the middle and this applies to any machine. The SpongeBob one is a little bit different because obviously you have your cards coming down from the left hand side and you have your hopper coming out from the right. Now in order to win the cards you need the forward momentum and you always gonna get the, co the coins that drop out from the hopper on the right there always seem to land either the middle or this sort of space here. And this is because as they are shot out from the hopper, they tend to fall to the middle of the tray. So again, especially when playing SpongeBob, if you notice lots of cards are on the right or on the left, just play cautiously, and if they don't seem to be moving, make sure they're the cards that you want, otherwise you could be wasting your money. Alright then guys, well I really hope you got a lot of helpful hints and tips from this video. Hopefully I've shown you how the coin pusher actually works, and how the side gutters work, how the percentages work. Obviously I haven't gone into much detail about the security flaps, things like tilt sensors or whatnot, because they're just common sense really. If you tilt the alarm, if you knock the machine, it will alarm and it will set the tilt sensor off and it will send the payout flap closed, which means you won't get any coins out or any prizes. But yeah, so hopefully you won't get caught in the trap of notes or cards or payout percentages where the odds are not in your favor. But obviously, use this with a pinch of salt. You can make the decision as to whether or not you're playing the coin pusher correctly or not. Of course, these are helpful hints and tips that I have found useful over the years. But of course, everyone has their own play tactics. So I really hope you enjoyed the video and I really, really wish you the best of luck in the iNext Arcade journey. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. See you later, bye-bye. If you like this video and you found the hints and tips useful, then please like the video and subscribe to our channel. On our channel, we'll be giving away loads of prizes from our redemption ticket videos where you can win the prizes that we win in the video. So make sure you check that out, guys, and thank you very much for watching. Make sure you like it, make sure you subscribe, and be the first to find out when the new videos are out. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.